In this video, we will explore the different types of roasters, methods of roasting, and the roasting process to help you understand how roasters create the perfect cup of coffee. The method of roasting can greatly impact the flavor, aroma, and overall quality of the final product. During the roasting process, the beans are constantly agitated to ensure an even roast. The temperature and duration of the roast will determine the level of roast, which can range from light to dark. The roasting process also causes the beans to expand in size, releasing gases and oils that contribute to the unique flavor and aroma of the coffee. There are several different types of coffee roasters available on the market, each with their own unique characteristics and advantages. Some of the most common types of roasters include drum roasters. These are the most traditional type of roaster and use a rotating drum to evenly roast the beans. They typically have a large capacity and can handle large batches of coffee. The drum is heated by gas, electricity or wood and the beans are roasted as they come into contact with the hot drum. Drum roasters will produce consistent roasting and have the ability to handle large batches. Drum roasters are generally considered to be easy to use, making them a great option for beginners or those without a lot of experience roasting coffee. However, they tend to roast more slowly than other types of roasters, which can be a disadvantage if you need to roast a large amount of coffee quickly. Drum roasters can be less precise than other types of roasters when it comes to controlling the temperature and timing of the roast. It's also worth mentioning that there are some semi-commercial drum roasters that can be used in small coffee shops or for small-scale roasting businesses. These roasters have a capacity that is between commercial and home drum roasters and are designed to meet the needs of small-scale roasters who want to roast a moderate amount of coffee regularly. The rotation of the drum allows for better control of the roast development by allowing the roaster to observe the beans and make adjustments as needed. Because the beans are constantly moving, they are exposed to different temperatures and roasting conditions, which can affect the final roast flavor profile. The roaster can adjust the drum speed or temperature to achieve the desired roast level. Perforated drum roasters are similar to traditional drum roasters in that they also use a rotating drum to roast the coffee beans. However, the main difference is that the drum has perforations or holes which allow for better airflow and more precise temperature control. This results in a more consistent and even roast of the beans. The heating system of a perforated drum roaster can be either gas, electric, wood or charcoal. The perforated drum roaster offers better heat distribution and control over the roasting process, resulting in a higher quality and more consistent final product. Additionally, the perforations in the drum provide better visibility of the beans during roasting, allowing the roaster to see the colour and movement of the beans more clearly. This can be beneficial in terms of monitoring the roast profile and making adjustments as needed. They also prevent beans from burning while roasting due to the increased airflow. Centrifugal roasters use a centrifugal force to roast the coffee beans rather than a rotating drum. The beans are placed in a spinning chamber and heated by hot air. As the chamber spins, the beans are flung to the sides, creating a centrifugal force that helps to evenly roast the beans. The speed and duration of the roast can be controlled by adjusting the temperature and time settings on the roaster. One of the main advantages of using a centrifugal roaster is that it can roast coffee beans quickly and efficiently. Additionally, 
the spinning motion helps to evenly distribute the heat, resulting in a more consistent roast. However, there are also some drawbacks to using a centrifugal roaster. The beans may not receive as much direct heat as in other types of roasters, which can result in a less intense flavour. Additionally, the spinning motion can generate a significant amount of heat and smoke, requiring proper ventilation to prevent fire hazards. Furthermore, centrifugal roasters are often less customizable than other types of roasters and the final roast can be less controlled when using this type of roaster. A fluid bed coffee roaster is a type of coffee roaster that uses hot air to roast the coffee beans. Beans are placed in a chamber and hot air is blown through them, causing them to roast evenly. This method of roasting is different from traditional drum roasters, which use direct heat to roast the beans. The fluid bed roaster method is considered to be more efficient and consistent way of roasting coffee beans. The hot air in a fluid bed roaster ensures that the coffee beans are roasted evenly, resulted in a more consistent flavour and aroma in the final product. A fluid bed roaster is well suited for small batch roasting, which allows for greater control over the roasting process and the ability to experiment with different roast profiles. Because the beans are suspended in hot air during the roasting process, the risk of smoke or ash contamination is minimized. Furthermore, fluid bed roasters can be more efficient as the hot air can be recycled to heat the beans, which can save on energy costs. The roasting process is a multi-step process that transforms raw green beans into the fragrant coffee that we know and love. The process typically takes around 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the type of roaster and the desired roast level. The first step in the roasting process is to remove any excess moisture from the beans. This is done by heating them to between 65 and 93 degrees centigrade for several minutes. Once the beans have been dried, they will begin to turn yellow and start to emit a grassy aroma. As the temperature inside the roaster continues to increase, the beans will reach a temperature of around 200 degrees centigrade. At this point, the beans will start to make a cracking noise, marking the beginning of the first crack. This is when the beans start to release their oils and expand its size. The roaster will continue to increase the temperature and roast the beans until they reach the desired level of roast. Different roast levels will require different amounts of time in this stage, with light roasts requiring less time and dark roasts requiring more. As the beans continue to roast, they will reach a temperature of around 220 to 230 degrees centigrade and will enter the second crack. This is when the beans start to break down and release more oils. Once the beans have reached the desired roast level, they will be removed from the roaster and cooled quickly to prevent further roasting. During the roasting process, the coffee roaster will be continuously monitoring the temperature and the colour of the beans, adjusting the heat and the airflow as necessary to achieve a consistent roast. It is important to keep in mind that the roasted process is a delicate balance between temperature, time and airflow and small adjustments can make a big difference in the final flavour of the coffee. Roasting coffee beans is not just an art but also a science that involves understanding the chemical reactions that occur during the process. The science behind coffee roasting is complex and multifaceted, but there are a few key concepts that are important to understand in order to create the perfect cup of coffee. The Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars that takes place during the roasting process. 
This action results in the formation of new compounds that give coffee its unique flavor and aroma. The Mallard reaction is responsible for the development of the characteristic flavors and aromas that we associate with coffee, such as chocolate, nutty and caramel notes. Caramelization is the process of breaking down sugars in the beans into simpler compounds. This process is responsible for the development of sweetness in the coffee. Acidity is one of the key characteristics of coffee that can greatly affect its taste. Acidity is a measure of the amount of acidity in the coffee and can range from low to high. Light roasts tend to have a higher acidity while dark roasts have less. Body refers to the thickness and weight of the coffee in the mouth. Light roasts tend to have a lighter body while dark roasts have a thicker and heavier body. Roast degree is a measure of how long and at what temperature the beans were roasted. It is important to note that different roast levels will affect the acidity, sweetness and body of the coffee. Light roasts will have a higher acidity and a lighter body, while dark roasts will have less acidity and a thicker body. Understanding the science behind coffee roasting could help you create the perfect cup of coffee by allowing you to control the acidity, sweetness and body of the coffee. It is also important to note that the roast degree is not only the only factor that affects the coffee profile. The origin of the beans, the variety and the processing methods also play a big role. Electric roasting is a method where the heat source is an electric heating element. Electric roasters are considered to be the most precise and easy to use, allowing for very precise temperature control, which is essential for achieving a consistent roast. They are more energy efficient and produce less emissions compared to gas roasters, making them a more sustainable option. Electric roasters are also easy to clean and maintain and they can be used in a wide range of environments. Electric roasters tend to produce a more balanced, clean and bright flavour profile, with notes of acidity and sweetness being more pronounced. Additionally, electric roasters are more compact and can be used in smaller spaces compared to gas roasters. They can also be equipped with advanced features such as customised, computerised controls and data logging, which can help to streamline the roasting process and make it more consistent. However, some coffee professionals prefer the flavour profile produced by gas roasters, which can have a smokier, more complex taste. Furthermore, electric roasters can be more expensive than gas roasters. Gas roasting is a method where the heat source is a gas flame. This method allows for more control over the flame and the temperature, and it is more affordable than electric roasters. Gas roasters are considered to be more traditional and have been used for a long time in the coffee industry. They are also more durable and have a longer lifespan compared to electric roasters. However, gas roasters also produce more emissions compared to electric roasters and are less energy efficient. Gas roasters can produce a more full-bodied and earthy flavour profile, with notes of chocolate and nuttiness being more pronounced. Wood roasting is a method where the heat source is wood. This method is less common than electric and gas roasting, but it is gaining popularity due to its ability to provide unique flavours and aromas to the coffee. Wood roasting is a more traditional method of roasting, it is a slower process uh, and this can affect the final product in a positive way as it can lead to a more complex and nuanced flavour profile. However, it can be more challenging to control the temperature and can be difficult to achieve a consistent roast. Wood roasting can add unique smoky, woody and sometimes spicy notes to the coffee and can be a great way to showcase the region of where the coffee was grown. 
wood roasting can be more sustainable if taken from sustainably managed woodlands where the wood is harvested from responsibly managed forest and is replanted to ensure the long-term health of the forest. Furthermore, wood roasting can also be a good option for roasters who want to create a truly unique and distinct product as the flavours imparted by the wood can vary depending on the type of wood used and the way it is prepared. Additionally, wood roasting can be more labour intensive and time consuming and it can also be more expensive due to the cost of the wood. Charcoal roasting is a method similar to wood roasting but it uses charcoal as the heat source. Although less common than wood roasting, it is still used in some regions. The charcoal roasting process is more complex and requires more skill than traditional methods. The high heat and intense smokiness of charcoal roasted results in a robust and full-bodied coffee with a distinct smoky flavour. Additionally, the slower roasted process allows for a more even roast and helps to preserve the coffee's natural flavours and aromas. The coffee pairs well with rich and bold flavours such as dark chocolate and nuts. However, it is worth noting that charcoal roasting can be more labour intensive and time consuming as well as more expensive due to the cost of the charcoal. In conclusion, there are many different types of coffee roasted, each with their own unique characteristics and benefits. Electric roasted offers precise temperature control. Gas roasting provides more control over the flame. Wood roasting can add a unique smoky woody and sometimes spicy notes to the coffee and charcoal roasting can result in a more robust and full-bodied coffee with a distinct smoky flavour. We hope this video has helped you gain a better understanding of the distinct coffee roasted methods and how they can affect the final flavour of your cup of coffee. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about coffee or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more great coffee related content.